Whales and other cetaceans thrive in our biologically rich waters. From the Atlantic to the Arctic to the Pacific, you can see cetaceans from pretty much every shoreline across the country. And I think that's something that's extraordinary to think about. I'm Connell Bradwell, I'm a wildlife conservationist here in British Columbia. And I'm Erica Porter, a fisher here in Nova Scotia. We are the hosts for Coastlines, a CBC series that brings together young Canadians who are working to save our animals, plants and habitats on all three of Canada's coasts. And today we're talking about whales. With Canada having the largest coastline on Earth, it isn't any wonder that we have the largest animals, whales. North Atlantic right whale is a whale, so it's huge. Being up close to them, it's, it's such a special feeling. This is Delphine, an assistant scientist at the Canadian Whale Institute. Each summer, she spends time out on the research boat conducting surveys and gathering information to try to uncover the mysteries that surround these enormous whales. On a typical day on the water, we'll collect photographs to know which individual whales are on the water, who are we seeing, and we'll also collect oceanographic data. We'll focus on which species uh, they're feeding on, and that allows us to get a clearer picture of what habitats the whales might be looking for. I have so many questions. So what did they learn? What we learned was that right whales, for example, are on the Scotian shelf nearly year round. This is so important because throughout the North Atlantic right whale's habitat, there are a lot of overlaps and conflicts with human activities. These include shipping lanes where the whales could travel through and get hit by boats or fishing areas where they risk entanglements. Delphine and her team need to know where this conflict is most likely happening so they can try to solve it. But this is becoming more and more difficult despite industry support. Since 2010, there's been a shift in their distribution. And that means that in the areas that we were protecting them, they're not there, so they're not being protected. And that's in part due to a shift in their food. That's a direct example of climate change in action. The climate crisis is forcing right whales to change their movement. And they're not the only cetacean that's doing this. Up in the Arctic, Katie Florco is investigating how the unicorns of the ocean, better known as narwhals, are getting on. I am part of a collaborative team that is working together to understand a region called the Last Ice Area at the tip of northern Ellesmere Island. Her research is in a really remote part of Nunavut. While local Inuit knowledge holders know a lot about narwhals near their homes, there's still important data to be collected for Western science too. So Katie and her team traveled north to survey for marine mammals. We brought with us a normal DSLR camera that was taking photos every couple of seconds. And we also brought an infrared video camera, hoping to pick up, you know, seals that are blending in on the sea ice. But they found a surprise, narwhals. Some of the farthest northern records of narwhals ever. And they were pretty excited about it. Katie believes this sighting was a result of receding sea ice giving the narwhals access to an area that would otherwise be impassable before. Sighting these narwhals wasn't the only thing they discovered though. We thought the infrared video would help us detect seals on the ice, which it did, but it also helped us detect narwhal in the water. The narwhal themselves showed up as a little hotspot in the water, but what was more surprising is that we also saw what we call a fluke print in the water behind them. What is a fluke print? It's a patch of calm water left behind on the surface. It's usually formed by a passing cetacean, kind of like a footprint. Tracking a species like the narwhal that are so elusive is a major challenge and any advancement in technology is a big deal. This is amazing that despite all the challenges facing these animals, they're still finding ways of surprising us. Here on Vancouver Island, we're on the home range of a very special type of orca and one that's close to my heart, the Southern resident killer whale. There are only 73 of these whales left. The southern resident orcas are a genetically unique species of orca in the world. They have their own language, diet, culture. We even know each individual by name and personality. Gloria Pancrazi is a documentary filmmaker and activist working with the critically endangered southern residents. Cetacean culture is something that Western science is just starting to learn about. And for the southern residents, this includes a number of different traditions. When the family groups reunite, they have specific traditions to celebrate this reunion. Think of it like an orca party. These orcas are so connected to one another and love so deeply. They have a part of the brain dedicated to empathy that we humans do not have. 
so they are truly remarkable. The loss of this population is being driven by multiple factors. The first one, the main one, is that their main food source, salmon, is also facing extinction. So the orcas are essentially starving to death. The second one is noise disturbance, which makes it harder for the whales to find food and to communicate with one another. And the third one is toxins and pollutants. All these are connected to the climate crisis. Yep, climate change. And like Gloria mentioned, the southern residents' main food source is declining. Salmon rely on both healthy ocean ecosystems and upstream river ecosystems where they breed, and this makes them extra vulnerable. The salmon are really temperature sensitive species, and so the warming waters is killing them. All of this means that through salmon, southern resident orcas are uniquely connected to the land, bringing them in close contact to us. You can probably feel just how interconnected this all is. And so I hope that with my work, I can help get real systemic change. I hope that when people think about saving the orcas or think about fighting the climate crisis, I hope they know that this means showing up as an ally, that it means amplifying indigenous movements for sovereignty and taking bold action. And I also hope that we can learn from these orcas because they work together through anything that comes their way. And this solidarity is key to taking on these big global issues we're facing. Thanks so much for watching. Check out our other videos and don't forget to subscribe.